डॉक्टर सतीश पाठक सर हुज कम ऑल द वे फ्रॉम पुणे कैवल्य धामा वी ऑल्सो हैव एन एम ओ यू विद दैम वेरी वेरी प्राउड ऑनर्ड एंड प्रिविलेज टू से दैट वी हैव एन एम ओ यू एंड डॉक्टर सतीश पाठक सर ही इज अ जनरल सर्जन एंड अ योगा कंसल्टेंट योगा रत्न अवॉर्डी एंड वर्ल्ड पी एच डी चक्र अवॉर्ड ही इज रिसीव्ड and then he is the director assistant director of the scientific research department uh, at kevalya dam and uh, member scientific committee for md niy the ministry of ayush government of india uh, the biggest achievement for him he has had lots of achievements but the important one i would say like our uh, madan mohan sir who included uh, you know medi um, yoga into the medical curriculum sir has been instrumental in uh, including yoga into all the medical colleges in maharashtra so madan mohan sir he is uh, something like you right you both are in the same uh, space here now we are really honored to have both of you here and uh, conducted so many international workshops and uh, you are going to enjoy him live here so without much ado i am handing over the mic to satish patak sir so good afternoon everybody after a very good inspirational and informative talk of dr venkateshan is now my responsibility to keep you awake <laughs> i hope now you will be reaching the lunch time so you will be definitely awake but i will try to make you still more awake so my topic is i will start with the prayer as usual guru brahma guru vishnu guru devo maheshwara guru sakshat para brahma tasmain shri gurave namaha tasmain shri gurave namaha with due respect to swami kulanand ji the organizers dr bhavanani dr madan mohan sir and all yoga lovers I have been given a very unique topic today: yoga in pre and post-operative conditions. I have been practicing yoga and teaching yoga since 1994, and I am also a surgeon, practicing surgery from 1973 to 2019. So, when initially in olden days yoga was not used as a therapy. but last 15 20 years we are using it as a therapy so we have seen that how much effect is seen in different diseases as i was practicing surgeon and i used to see lot of problems with the patient in pre operative and post operative period i thought why not to use this and i am using this yoga as a tool to the pre operative patients and in post operative period for last about 10 12 years so this is a topic of choice given by dr bhavanani so i am very much thankful to the organizers and dr bhavanani for giving me a topic of my liking now as you know yoga can be practiced by anybody as yogic science says yuva vruddhoti vruddho va vyadhito durbalo piva abhyasa tasiddhi ma apnuti sarva yogeshwara tandritah means you may be of the age of 10 to 20 30 40 till 100 you might be young you might be senior citizen senior senior citizen you may be healthy you may not be healthy you may be having some disease anybody can practice yoga and that is why i ventured to use this yoga tool for the pre operative patients also now what are the problems faced during pre and post operative period 
Now, usual problems they are seen with the patients who are going to undergo some major surgery like heart wall surgery or bypass surgery. Or second is a cancer surgery. And third is a planned major surgery requiring more than two to three hours. So they are under anesthesia for more than three to four hours. So these are the patients they face more problems. Now if you try to classify the problems, problems can be immediate after diagnosis, preoperative period, intraoperative period and postoperative period. Now we'll see what are the different problems faced by different type of patients. Now problems immediately after diagnosis faced by the patient, these are the fear and apprehension due to diagnosis of a dreaded disease. If anybody is diagnosed that uh, you have got a cancer, in my cancer lecture, I write that C-A-N-C-E-R, at the R, I superimpose L. So once patient is diagnosed cancer, what he feels? Cancel, my life is over now. That is the first feeling he gets, he is half dead. Now such patients, they have got a fear psychosis, apprehension, what will happen? I am still 40 and I have got developed cancer, so what will happen? I will die in another 2-4 years. Then heart surgery. Heart surgery is a major surgery. So that also patient gets frightened. Then major surgery like removal of any part of the bodies. Suppose somebody's stomach is to be removed, kidney is to be removed, suppose hand is to be removed or leg is to be removed. So they get frightened. So these are the major problems and that's why they go into sad mood or they are depressed. Now all these things, they activate the sympathetic system. And once sympathetic system is activated, what happens we have seen in the morning lectures. So I don't go into details of that. Now problems faced in preoperative period faced by the patient, the preparative phase for the surgery. Now once patient is diagnosed that he has got cancer or heart disease and then he has to undergo major surgery. Now when he has to undergo major surgery, he has to undergo a lot of investigations, blood investigation, then uh, uh, MRI, CT scan, sonography, all that. So he is under tension. Because if the investigations say that you are fit for surgery, you will be operated. If investigations say, no, no, you are not fit for surgery, then your surgery will be postponed. If surgery is postponed, then patient will think that my disease will progress. And if disease progresses, what will happen to me? So that is another tension for him. So he is worried about fitness. So he has to uh, face the stressful situation arising as a patient. He remembers one of my colleagues, he was having same problem. She was operated and he became alright and one month he joined the duties. Ah, so no problem, I will be also alright. But by the time he finishes that thought, he remembers another patient who was also his colleague. He was having same problem, he was operated but he is no more today. So that thought makes him think, what will happen to me? Worried about the outcome of the major surgery, knowing all these things, he thinks what will happen to me, whether I will be like patient A who is now working with me after surgery or like B who has already gone. So where am I? He doesn't know. So he is more worried about the outcome. So he needs a mental and emotional stability which has got direct effect on outcome of the major surgery. The way you think you become. This always matters everywhere. I will tell you one example, willpower. One of my patients was 74 year old and he was having ulcer in the stomach which was heading towards malignancy, cancer. So we have to remove his whole of the stomach, that is called total gastrectomy. And it is a major surgery, it requires about 2 to 3 hours. So we said we have to operate he said, yes, I am ready to get operated. But his relatives, they came and fired us. What you are going to operate on this now 75-year-old patient? Let him leave water, small span is remaining. We don't want him to get operated. I said, okay. Because unless and until patient gives consent, we cannot operate. So we said, okay. 
नेक्स्ट डे पेशंट टोल मी सर आय एम द पेशंट माय स्टमक हॅज गॉट अल्सर यू आर गोईंग टू ऑपरेट यू ऑपरेट इट आय एम गिव्हिंग यू परमिशन हु आर दोज रिलेटिव्ह दे आर देअर बिकॉज माय मनी इज देअर दे आर विथ मी मन्स माय मनी इज ओवर दे विल नॉट टॉक टू मी ऑल्सो सो यू ऑपरेट विथ द कॉशियस माइंड अँड गार्डेड प्रोग्नॉसिस आय ऑपरेटेड डेट पेशंट इन नाईन्टीन सेवन्टी नाईन्टीन एटी नाईन ॲज युज्युअल फिफ्थ सिक्स डे बिकॉज द गॅस्ट्रिक सर्जरी इज व्हेरी मेजर सर्जरी ही हॅड सम प्रॉब्लेम अँड ही बिकेम सिरियस फ्रॉम सेवन डे टील थर्टीन डे ऑल इज रिलेटिव्ह जे यूज टू कम अँड बंबार्ड ऑन अस वी आर टेलिंग यू नॉट टू ऑपरेट वॉट यू आर डन ही हॅज बिकम सिरियस नाव ही विल डाय we are cross hand and we are praying god and luckily on 14 day he came out of that crisis and he was discharged on 28 day and till his age of 95 every year used to come and bless me every year used to come in that same month when which month we operated and he used to bless me why the will power was there so will power is very important and this we can achieve by practicing yoga that's why i want to emphasize on the will power and then all these things that gone then he is thinks now i have to get operated so requires finance in olden days the expenditure was in few hundred thousand rupees but now it has gone into few hundred lakhs rupees which a common man cannot afford so he has to see for the loan or some friend he will give him money or mediclaim or policy whatever he has got so he has to make <coughs> all those arrangements then intraoperative we have seen all the preoperative problems now what are the intraoperative problems the problems are faced by surgeon and anesthetist not by the patient why because he is unconscious he cannot face the problem the problems are faced by surgeon and anesthetist what are they anesthetist now when we want to operate any patient we have to make him unconscious anesthetize him paralyze him totally so for that we give injections like propofol and scoline and pancurinium which relaxes paralyzes the all the muscles of the body and make him totally blank now when we start operation before that we anesthetize the patient once we finish the operation we withdraw the anesthetist withdraws the drugs which is anesthetizing patient and give antidote like neostigmine that is called reversal of anesthesia <laughs> the patient is put tube into the trachea and he is put on respirator and artificial respiration is given and then we are operating whatever jugglery we want to do we do that time because patient is also not able to see what we are doing once surgery is over then he gives antidotes and uh, reversal occurs the drugs are washed out slowly patient comes out, out of anesthesia if his all organs are functioning properly whatever drugs were given for giving him anesthesia they will be washed out then antidote will act on it and patient will come out of anesthesia if the organs are not functioning what will happen we are given anesthesia we are operated patient doesn't come out of anesthesia because the drugs which are circulating into the body they are still there they are not excreted by the kidney and so what happens sometimes it has happened uh, patients relatives ask what is the time required for the operation we say half an hour will be sufficient and then patient is taken inside we operate one hour pass two hour pass three hours pass patient is not coming out relatives are all the time asking the in charge ot what happened our patient is not coming out he said only half an hour why it has happened because the anesthesia was given patient didn't come out of anesthesia and myself and anesthetist both are sitting by the side of the bed of the patient and pumping with the ambu bag waiting when it, he will come out of anesthesia so this is because of the organs not functioning properly so these problems are faced by the surgeon and the anesthetist now coming to the post operative period 
these are faced by the patient and also surgeon now what are the problems faced by patient if all the organs are functioning properly if heal, healthy the healing of the wound it will depend upon good functioning of all organs happy mind it will secrete happy endorphin just now we have seen in the previous lecture secretion of dopamine serotonin oxytocin they are help in better healing of the wound now good muscle strength will prevent burst abdomen have you understood what the meaning of burst abdomen when we operate we take a incision of the abdomen like this now there are about 6 to 7 layers when we reach to the intestines so after finishing surgery we close one by one layer by layer so we close the abdomen in seven layers and once patient comes out of anesthesia he is shifted to the ward and if something happens there are two reasons either the the cells are not in a good condition so what are sutures we have taken to keep this tooth in position they give way and abdomen opens scar opens up that is called burst abdomen you must be knowing some patient have developed incisional hernia after operation after a few days of operation in the scar there is a swelling over intestines are pouting out that is called incisional hernia why this happens because the wound has not healed properly so this is again depending upon the muscle strength and the cell functioning early mobility will be possible preventing post operative chest complications like pneumonia if patient is sleeping uh, uh, non ambulatory lying down on the bed for long time the lungs they don't function properly and then patient develops pneumonia you might have heard also sometimes in paper also you might have heard the so and so fellow great person he was uh, uh, not well and admitted in the hospital for last two months and last 15 days he was recovering but suddenly he developed pneumonia and he died hypostatic pneumonia why because the lungs are not functioning because ambulatory the hardly uh, 25% lungs is functioning remaining uh, lungs are always dormant and there they develop infection and that is why it is called pneumonia and then pneumonia is one of the complications which causes death of so the uh, fear of developing pneumonia in a long standing uh, ambul non ambulatory patient is there the pain tolerance will be better it will help good healing now pain tolerance as yesterday i was talking to dr maruti is there any major which parameter by which we can measure the pain we cannot measure the pain if there is a pain what will happen if you ask the patient post operative when we go to the ward in the second day we tell okay come on you get up now sit you take your hand up he say oh i am getting pain what you are telling me wait for some more days so again he is in non ambulatory condition so if patient is not moving the normal routine doesn't come up and patient may have a delayed discharge because he will have to stay in the hospital till the time he becomes up and above and start moving it convalescent spirit will be more if the pain perception is more if pain perception is less second day uh, we have seen some patients second day they sit and make movements and there is no problem that patient seven day we remove the stitches eight day he goes home and the patient who is more uh, 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 what you say pain tolerance is less not ready to uh, comply with us uh, whatever we tell him okay get up sit down sit down this patient they stay in the ward for 15 20 days it is because non ambulatory condition so these are all problems faced by the patient and what are the problems faced by the surgeon till the time patient is not discharged surgeon has got a tension i don't know what will happen suppose he still lie down in the bed all the time since he may develop pneumonia and whatever i have done that will go to the west he will die because of pneumonia so this tension is there to the surgeons now yoga as a therapy can be used as preventive curative adjuvant and palliative preventive if you practice yoga you can keep yourself healthy so it acts as a prevention which sages were doing in the hill area they never used to fall sick because they are practicing yoga then curative curative is possible in cases 
early diagnosis, early onset diabetes, early onset uh, uh, hypertension, just uh, uh, diagnosed about uh, six months back, one year back. Those patients, if they pr start practicing yoga, they can definitely get cured by that element. Adjuvant, suppose diabetes is there for last 10 years, hypertension is there for last 10 years. Such patient, if you do yoga practices, their doses can be controlled, their drug may come down. Suppose he's on four tablets a day, it, he may require two tablets a day. So it, uh, there it adds as a adjuvant and palliative. Now some patients, we have done everything operated, but he's not cooperative, pain uh, uh, factor is there, he's not making movement, he's not taking any active uh, movements to get up and sit. They are on the verge of dying, suppose. So whatever life remaining is there, let us make it comfortable by giving yoga practices and that is a palliative. Now can you give the yoga practices in operative patient as palliative, curative, adjuvant? No, it is only adjuvant therapy. You cannot give the preventive, curative or palliative. But by giving yoga practices adjuvant therapy, it can prevent the sense of yoga practices, will prevent the complications and will get a good post-operative period, convalescence period will be less and it will not have the bad post-operative results. So that is how it acts as a preventive. Now coming to the, what are the effects of yoga as adjuvant in preoperative? By practicing yoga during preoperative period, what will happen? He will have good mental preparation will face the surgery boldly, leading to good pre and post operative period. Because again here, the principle comes, the way you think, you become. If you are taken in the mind that, yes, I am going to become all right, I am in the good hands, the surgeon is good, the hospital is good, very good reputation, and my two friends were operated for same reason and they have become all right. This faith is there, he will become definitely all right. But this can be infused by giving yoga practices in pre operative period. So you have to bring him up from that depressed mood. Then improving the strength of voluntary and involuntary muscles all over the body, particularly of heart, lungs and kidneys. By practicing yoga, giving him asanas, you will improve the flexibility of the muscle, the tone of the muscle, So it will because muscles are there all over the body. You take any part of the body, there are muscles, even vessels, artery and vein. The wall is made up of vessel. So if the walls, muscles are functioning properly, the contraction, relaxation of the vein artery will be good. So it improves the muscular functioning. Then it may have uneventful quick reversal from anesthesia. If the muscles are good, uh, the liver, kidneys, they are functioning properly. When anesthetic drugs are given, they will be excreted out immediately and he will come out of anesthesia. So the reversal will be good. Then convalescence may be short, expected good results can be achieved and morbidity and mortality will be less. Morbidity means post-operative, after some event, if the, 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 some after effects are remaining over there, that is called morbidity and mortality means going up. So morbidity and mortality will be less. Then effects, how they act? Suppose patient is given preoperatively yoga practices. Suppose he has got diabetes, he has got blood pressure, it will come under control. So when anesthetist has to give drug, he has to think 10 times whether he has got uh, diabetes, whether he has got uh, hypertension, whether he is on some corticosteroid, so that again he has to think the drugs accordingly. So it will help to give proper anesthesia and the re reversal will be better and the uh, removal or uh, drugs which are given for this patient, they will be excreted by kidney, liver and lungs if they are functioning properly. And total treatment period may not be stormy. It can make post-operative life very much comfortable. So that is how the effect of yoga as an adjunct in preoperative stage. Effect of yoga in intraoperative period. Cannot practice yoga in this period as he is unconscious. But Whatever yoga practices perform in preoperative period will show the effects by uneventful smooth reversal from anesthesia. This is very important thing. Once patient is to be anesthetized, 
anesthetist has to see whether he has got diabetes, blood pressure, or a, a is he on corticosteroids. So accordingly, has to adjust dose. Sometimes he might have to give more doses. So longer the anesthesia period, morbidity, mortality increases. Shorter the period, better the results. Another thing I believe in that Almighty has given us this human body, and by operating. We are insulting the human body. When we are touching, cutting it with a knife, we are insulting the human tissue. More the insult done, more the bad results. So shorter the period of surgery, better the results are there. That is what we have seen in last my 49 years of surgery. If uh, I take more time for uh, 15 minutes surgery, if I take one hour, usually I will get bad results because more insult is done to the human tissue. Shorter the period, better the results. This is only possible when there are no or less or under well control comorbidities before surgery. He will have a speedy recovery in post-operative period. Now, normally in our body there are thousands of thousand cells and muscles, and uh, these muscles they are of two types: voluntary and involuntary. Now, when you sleep. Do you think that your to, to all muscles are sleeping? No. 10% of muscles are active, alert. So, suppose you are sleeping and bell rings, suddenly you get up and start walking. How it is happening? Because 10% of the muscle which are active, alert, they start the action and then remaining take up uh, action and then you start, uh, are able to walk. Now, such a patient, suppose you are sleeping also, if somebody comes and uh, puts some hot object on your finger, what happens? Immediately you throw it away. That means some sensation is there, muscles are active. Now, when you want to operate, if patient is in that position, if I cut, what will happen? He will throw the hand up. So, we want total paralyze. Patient should be totally paralyzed. If I cut, he is not able to make movements at all. And for that, you have to give anesthesia, which will all muscles are paralyzed. Patient is not breathing on his own. We are putting a tube through the nose, through the trachea, that is called endotracheal tube, and we are connecting to the respirator. Once operation is over, the anesthetist starts reversal of the anesthesia. What we will do, first we will stop giving the anesthetic drugs, which is maintaining his paralyzed level, and then we are giving antidotes, so that the water drugs were given, they will be nullified, and they will be excreted to the kidney. So some of the drugs are excreted through kidney, and the gases we use for anesthetizing patient, nitrous oxide and all that, they will be excreted by the lungs. So what is necessary? That he should have good liver, uh, kidney functioning and lungs functioning. Then all these drugs will be excreted and then patient will come out of anesthesia. Otherwise, what will happen? If patient doesn't come out of anesthesia, if the alveoli, lungs are not functioning properly, nitrous oxide is not ex excreted, it will remain into the lungs and patient will be having anesthetized effect. So, operation is finished, but patient has not come out of anesthesia. So, this is possible. So, if he is on respirator, unless and until patient starts breathing on his own, we, can we cannot take out the tube. So we have to wait for that. So if lung, kidneys and uh, liver all are functioning properly, then it is possible to extubate, means remove the tube and patient will start breathing on his own. This is possible if he has practiced yoga preoperatively and all the, the conditions of the lung, liver uh, has improved, then it is possible. Other muscles in the body functioning like uh, uh, lungs and cardiac muscles, excretion of the drug occurs through the kidney, liver, nitrous by the uh, carbon dioxide from the lungs. Quick reversal immediately after completion of surgical procedure is only possible if muscular system, liver, kidneys and lungs are functioning properly. This is made possible by practicing yoga preoperatively. So, uh, this uh, the skill of the anesthesia is also there. Always good surgeons get good anesthetists. The combination of bad surgeon and good uh, anesthetist never stays. Because if surgeon is good, you will definitely get a good anesthetist. If surgeon is bad, 
if what are good anesthetics is there what is the criteria of good anesthetics when i take my last suture and tie it by that time patient is out and he will ask surgeon my surgery is over so that is a good anesthetist if such anesthetist gives anesthesia to a bad surgeon what will happen he will get bored so this time he has attended him but next time suppose that surgeon calls the anesthetist he will say no today i have got another case i am busy you can call another sir anesthetist so this happens so good anesthetist can prove his skill provided patient's general condition is good liver function is proper kidney function is proper and this can be given by practicing pre operative yoga and that is why the importance of it effect of yoga as adjunct in post operative period now post operative period is very uh, cumbersome pe period that time patient is bed ridden first few days he is not able to move he is not given oral feed so he is nil by mouth then because of the pain he is not making any movements so because of that what will happen because of the uh, uh, associated comorbidities also patient will uh, the convalescence period will increase then he will be under tension i have been operated 8 days back and still i am lying down i am not recovering i am not able to sit my pain is not going i am not given food also to eat so all this problem will make him mentally upset if he is lying down for long time again the chest complications lung complications can occur so to when you can give practices if he has op, uh, uh, practice pre operatively yoga then he can start practicing yoga after operation but if he has practiced pre operatively he knows the technique he knows the benefits of yoga you need not waste time in giving technique and uh, giving him explanation if you practice this you will get this bit to benefit you need not and in that post of period he is not in a mood to listen all these thing he said oh what you are talking i am getting pain don't talk all this nonsense so but if you are given him yoga practices preoperatively he knows the importance he knows the technique he will practice it definitely so this is possible 5 minute ha yeah. so it will save the time in giving in techniques as patient knows the technique he can practice it definitely now what yoga practices you can give these are the different yoga practices you can give to the patient in pre operative period now what basic principle you have to re remember that the yoga practices should be selected as per the disease and part of the body affected avoid practices which has got direct effect on that affected part suppose he has got a lung disease so you will have to avoid kapalbhati so it is decided by the therapist by looking at the patient's condition and what type of operation is to undergo now coming to the post operative period the initially patient is nil by mouth means he is not given anything orally so that time what you can give you have to wait for some more time once he start given oral feeds once patient starts getting oral feeds now he feels now i become normal so then his mental setup is ready to do something which you tell and then you can give him all these practices once the sutures are removed operation after operation sutures are removed and he is fit for go home the wound has healed that time you can give these practices and you can add some more practices the, the main important is kriya yoga and kavaladam tradition meditation which will help to bring him back to the normal here again precaution same you will not give practices uh, which are uh, particularly affected part then it should not be given uh, hurriedly it should be step by step and should not use force in practicing yoga now just two three minutes i will take the different kriyas i have been giving scientific explanation of all yogic kriyas what happen when you practice kapalbhati all that so i will just give kapalbhati if you practice there are about 13 14 benefits i explained in that the important is the patency of the tricuberkel tree is maintained by practicing yoga alveola are kept alert in view of elasticity which is more important from the point of view of anesthesia it cleans up whole of the respiratory system increases lung capacity which is very necessary prerequisite for the anesthetic uh, anesthetic patient then ujjayi it cleans up the air passage increases the lung capacity besides there are so many other benefits also but only from operative point of view i am telling you 
then uh, I have tested, uh, now everybody knows the pulse oximeter, I have tested uh, uh, oxygen level in 300 patients after practicing Ujjayi and here you can see the uh, uh, improvement into the oxygen level in pre and post yoga. Then Brahmari, Brahmari is one of the best thing because it improves, it kills the bacteria and virus in respiratory tract. So causes vasodilatation at alveolar bed, so no pulmonary hypertension. It has been proved, the humming done because of the Brahmari, it increases the 15-fold increase in the ox nitrous oxide production. It, it, it happens into the paranasal sinuses. And these two definitely will kill the bacteria and virus into the respiratory tract. It has been very useful tool during the uh, COVID period. Asanas, I will just say, these are the muscles all over body. And in these muscles, there are the arteriovenous arcade, like this. And uh, what is the importance of this? By practicing asana, again, there are so many benefits. Important, improves the flexibility, prevents the rigidity of the body, increases the stamina and endurance, improves the arterial, uh, artery and vein arcade functioning in the muscle, which increases flow and also helps to uh, take out the waste product, the uh, anesthetic drugs, they will be washed out immediately. It helps to drain the metabolites, so the muscle will improve. Shavasan, it improves the blood supply to the heart, particularly coronary arteries, and if 10 minutes Shavasan, blood more will flow to the heart and you will feel fresh. Then Kriya Yoga, Anlom Vilom Omkar Gayatri, it helps to improve the belief system, healing system starts functioning, what happens? It mobilizes the body resources in such a way that you get well. And that is important for a patient who is recovering from the surgery. Gayatri, the way you think you become, I already explained to that. Uh, yoga helps to uh, improve the immunity at local and systemic in general. It, at cellular level, health improves. Improves the balance between the pro-inflammatory cytokines and anti-inflammatory cytokines. If the pro-inflammatory cytokines are more, patient will have more illness, but we have done research and we found that yoga has improved the level of the anti-inflammatory cytokines, which will help to keep the health. I would just like to give more importance of why yoga should be practiced. So this Kavi Surdas, though I am going to tell you, he said, Re mana dheeraj kyao na dhare, Re mana dheeraj kyao na dhare, Savat do hajar ke baad aisa yoga pare. He said, have some patience. Don't be panicky. But he said, after year 2000, a time is going to come. What, what type? The Purava Paschima Dakshina Uttara Chaudhisa Kala Pire. There will be increase in uh, death toll. Everywhere on this side, this side, there will be, you will find a death occurring. And the person who was listening to it, he got frightened. He said, if such thing happens, what will happen on the earth? The Kavi Surdas who has written this, he was a blind person. But he knew what is going to happen after 400 years. What he said? Kal vyala se vahi bachega, jo soham ka dhyan karega. Ye hai hari ki lila, tale nahi tale. He said, this is going to happen. But if you want to save yourself from that, you control your breath. And the science of controlling breath is nothing but the yogic science. And that is why you understand the importance of the yoga and start practicing and cultivate good habits. Once you get into any habit, you cannot get rid of it. See the fun of the word habit itself, H-A-B-I-T. Remove H, sit down one minute, I get more tension. <laughs> one, I told you five minutes, I am finishing it. Remove H, a bit remains, means still habit is there. Remove A, bit remains. Remove B, it remains, means he still goes to the hiding place and smoke a cigarette. And do anything, habit remains, means once you get into any habit, you cannot get rid of that. So try to cultivate good habits and those good habits are nothing but yogic practices. So I pray Almighty, you will all practice yoga regularly and you will keep health, yourself healthy and also make other people also healthy. Thank you very much. These are my books. Thanks a lot. I, uh, personally, I can uh, give thanks to Dr. Bahanani for giving me such an interesting topic because I being a surgeon, I am interested in giving yoga to the pre and post operative period. Thanks a lot.
Thanks a lot, sir. Thank you very much. Hari Om. Thank you so much, sir. You know, we always hear of so many topics. So I felt that it would be wonderful to hear from a surgeon about how, because people always say, even yesterday we all in our panel were saying, yoga cannot be used in emergencies, we cannot use it in operation theatre, you know, we, this is what we say. But then to know that there are places it can come in, I think it's so important. So thank you so much, sir, for your kind sharing.